Hi, I'm Tox from the Baby Cut Shop in Chelsea and today the Queen turns 95. I was going to say 25 but no, she's 95. And I've been having some thoughts about the seasons of a woman's life because she, as you know, lost her husband very recently. They were married for 73 years and now she finds herself in yet another season. And it would appear that women go through multiple seasons and it never ends. But what's even interesting is that just going from one season to the next does not mean we're letting go of the previous. So it ends up looking like we're living our lives in layers. You're a daughter first and then at some point you find yourself as a woman. And then you find yourself someone's partner and if you want a family then you become a mother. And then you become a grandma. And while you're going through all of these different stages of life, you hold on to the previous one at the same time and it can get a bit overwhelming. I thought I'd share some thoughts on how to handle overwhelm because it's a real thing. My first emotion that comes to mind are three emotions that I identified, three out of many by the way, that I identified as the, the source of overwhelm in our lives as women. The first one is mom guilt. That one takes the biscuit because every mother has felt or is feeling mom guilt. I've been a mom for 21 years. My oldest is 21. She's going to be 22 this year. And I still occasionally have to grapple with this emotion. And it happens when you feel like you haven't done all that you should have done or that you are falling short in some way. This might not necessarily be limited to your role as mom, but it could simply even be with regards to your role as a daughter to your parents or you feel guilty about how you're running your home, or you feel that you are falling short, perhaps in your career or your business. And this feeling of guilt just seems to accompany you wherever you go. And so mom guilt is a very real thing. And I've spoken about it a few times in the past because it's one of the most common topics that people bring up when we're having conversations, how to have conversations as women. And one way to manage mom guilt that I use is to categorize your life. This is, it really is quite simple. What are the areas of life that matter the most to you? So for example, motherhood, looking after your house, so not necessarily the people in the house, but the house itself, um, your family that will come under motherhood, your um, career or business, or your education if you're in education, and of course yourself because everyone says we need to make sure we're at the top of the list, but if you're not even on the list, you're not going to get to the top. And so have your life in different categories. And number one, write a list of the barest minimum that needs to be done for you to sanction it as done. So for example, your, the standard of your home, how should your home look to you for you to consider it okay? doesn't have to be in its best state, but what's an okay state for you? And you do that through all the different areas of life. And what that does is it takes the burden off you trying to aim for perfection every single time. The other thing to do is begin to recognize as you go through the day, start to recognize when you are blessing these areas. And I call it blessing because it's a nicer term to use than cleaning or picking up after or cooking for your family. So every time you hug your little one, you're blessing your family. Every time you pick up a toy, a stray toy from the floor and put it where it should be, you're blessing your house. And so it's really about recognizing just how much work you're doing in these areas to stop you feeling guilty or feeling inadequate. Second emotion that we tend to feel as women is frustration. And frustration has got many causes or many sources. One of them is, is stress. When we're stressed, we feel frustrated. Another reason we feel frustrated is when our inside doesn't match the outside. So what we desire inside us is the opposite of what's happening around us. I might desire or expect to walk into a spotless kitchen when I get home tonight, but when I get there, it might be the complete opposite. And that could cause a feeling of irritability or frustration. And the way to manage frustration is to, is to have realistic expectations. The day that I read a book called Bringing Up Boys was a day I'll never forget.
I was expecting son number three and numbers one and two were playing in the garden and we had a pond in our previous home. We had a, a really nice koi pond and the boys were playing outside and one of them reached out to get his ball and he fell into the pond. Now I happen to have just finished reading chapter one of that book which listed a litany of atrocities that boys of all ages got up to and my mouth was wide open while I was reading it and so my, my son falling into the pond because he was reaching for his ball and he wasn't he knew not to play um, it, not to go not to climb up the ledge onto the pond because it wasn't on the ground level even though I had told him even though he knew right from wrong he climbed onto the ledge and he fell in thankfully there was no disaster I was nearby and he was fine but I think that reading that book ahead of time helped me to manage my expectation of toddler boys. Another revelation that really helped me and helps me now as a mom to teens is understanding that the prefrontal cortex, which is the reasoning part of the brain, does not become fully developed until the age of 25. That explains why teenagers sometimes do very silly things when they know they shouldn't. They're just not fully formed. And so when my boys shock me, still and just get me leave me with my mouth wide open because i don't know how to react to what they've just said or done i remember that their prefrontal cortex is just not fully formed and so they will say or do irrational things sometimes with younger children make sure that you are giving them age-related tasks and don't have unrealistic expectations for them certainly don't compare your children just because your friend uh, your friend's son or daughter is the same age as yours and they are developing quicker or they, they seem to be developing quicker, they have reached more milestones than your child has, does not mean that your child has fallen behind. So avoiding comparison is, is one way to make sure you manage the feeling of frustration. Uh, making sure that your environment fosters uh, well-being and a mindset that is non-competitive is very important and in this age of course with social media that is something that you've got to do intentionally it's not just going to happen and the third emotion that women tend to feel that cause overwhelm is loneliness now loneliness is not the same as being alone so this is not an emotion that's felt by single moms or or, or moms who don't have the support network around them that's a different situation Loneliness is an emotion whereby you feel you're the only person going through what you're going through. I remember when my boys were very young, I would have outbursts of tears because I had mine very close in age. So I had three children ages three and under at one time and I was potty training child number one and number two was um, nowhere near ready to be potty trained. He was very little and, and I also had a newborn as well. And dealing with all three of them and changing so many nappies, I found it uh, lonely because I thought even my husband wouldn't understand what this feels like to have your head stuck in nappies all day long. I was a stay-at-home mom as well. And so loneliness is that feeling that no one else is going through what I'm going through and no one understands what I'm going through. And the way around this is really so speak to your midwife or your doula or just somebody who has formed a part of your support network and let them know exactly how you're feeling. It's not going to be strange to them. Moms who are experienced are also such good health because we're always ready and willing to share our experiences. Just don't overdo it because you might get overwhelmed by too many opinions as well. If you're watching YouTube videos or Instagram videos that uh, represent or that show women who appear to be perfect as moms or as women you will no doubt compare yourself to them and then feel like you're falling short all the time and the more you surround yourself with these sorts of images and these sorts of stories the more inadequate you will feel and the lonelier you will seem because it na will now appear everybody around you seems to be doing so well at the baby cut shop remember that we're here for you whether it is a listening ear you're after and you just need someone to speak to regarding motherhood or pregnancy give us a call send us a dm or visit us in store at 408 kings road and of course we also supply the most beautiful furniture in the world and we design stunning nurseries talk to you soon